If your father was still alive today, weird question, I know, but what do you think he would be doing? My dad, you know what? I think I think he'd be like Jay Z. I think that he'd be he a good into man. all kind all kinds of business ventures. Um, even you know, even with him dabbling in sports at this point, um, I think across the board he he'd be doing everything. And I, I think because people have asked me before too, you know, would you think he'd be proud of the music business? And my answer is always yes, because you know now in the music business, so many people are independent. Like yeah. and you know that's he was doing, doing it on his own, being who he wanted to be, um, you know, speaking up for what he wanted to speak on it, you know, and now we kind of, whether the artist wanted to or not, in this day and age, everyone was kind of forced to be independent and really get out there and make it on your own. Yeah. You know, even for me, people, some the biggest misconception I have is people think I have it easy because I'm Easy's daughter, <laughs> uh, no pun intended, yeah. but I don't. I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta kick down doors in the same way that he did, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and really fight for it, especially because I'm so different from him. Yeah. I probably would be a little easier if I was, uh, you know, a mini him, if I was a boy and I was a rapper and, I, you know, I was trying yeah. to just recreate it and be a little easy too, you know. Yeah. But that's not what I'm doing here. I'm a girl. I grew up completely different. I listen to different music. And a lot of people also don't know this thing. Um, I don't even get my, I don't think I get my musical talents from my dad's side. On my mom's side, mm. my, my grandparent, my, um, my grandfather and my great grandfather are singers. Um, my great grandfather was in a band. He played the drums, and he sang backup for Sammy Davis Jr. Oh, like wow. my musical That's background, yeah, my musical background is really on my mother's side. So a lot of people think, oh, because she's easy as dog, she's trying to do music. Like no, I mean, I literally have grown up in music. I was in a chorus when I was in elementary school. Like this has been my entire life. Yeah, I, st- I love how you said that you're different from your father, but you still ride with his legacy and support it. Absolutely. E- in the movie, I thought this was funny. Uh, Easy E loves saying that line about the White House paying fifteen hundred dollars for a million dollars of press. Not that many people know this whole story behind that. Um, if you wanted to explain that story, I thought it was an interesting story uh, about how he was at the Republican dinner with the president, and he he uh, did a lot of uh, charity work and uh, things of that nature that you didn't like. You know what I mean? Yeah. You didn't see that side of Easy where he was funny guy, friendly guy, and did charity. Yeah, you know, it's funny, a lot of it, that's another thing a lot of people don't know, you know, he's been to a lot of charities, you know, there was actually one after his passing that they actually asked me to come in and be a part of, because I did a lot of charities since I was little, too, nice. it was called Athletes and Entertainers for Kids, and, um, you know, they didn't really get into that in the movie, you know, you do hear the, see the part where kids asking him, like, how do you, you know, go sit down at the White House, you know, all that, but they don't yeah. really show really what it took to get there, you know, he was very loving, very giving, very genuine, and um, and very, very funny and a jokester. And you know, he I think he found humor in everything. And 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 they yeah, do kind of touch on you know him talking about you know all publicity is good publicity. Yeah. So you know that's nothing bigger for somebody going from records like fuck the police to walking and having dinner in the White House. So <laughs> I, I think, mean, it's just absolutely incredible. I think it's hilarious too how Ice Cube plays a cop in movies now. It's pretty ironic. Right, right. And uh, what is your relationship with uh, Jerry Holler? With Jerry Hellis, yeah. um, we are actually very close. Um, you know what? I haven't seen him in a little bit. Um, we actually used to live in the same like gated community. Really? Um, but I, my mother and I both actually just talked to him last week, and um, uh, he he was going to go see the movie um, with his lawyers. And so we had. That's what huh? he, said. he said he was going to see the movie with his lawyers, meaning like he was ready to sue because I don't think he really gets along with Ice Cube too well. <laughs> yeah, they. This is the thing. Well, because no one talked to Jerry uh, about his just his perspective or anything from the movie yeah. they just really went off of their own perspective yeah, they, which is fine because the story was told from them you yeah. know and that that is how they felt at the time but you know and i i in jerry's defense you know it i feel like you know if they could have gotten his side too yeah. um and things that he went through and um you know i mean i've, I've been really close to jerry Heller my entire life um and, yeah, I'm, I'm supposed to be seeing him next week. I know he was supposed to go see the movie, so I'm probably going to sit down and say, okay, well, what did you think? They definitely um, make him look like the bad guy. Yeah, and, I mean, you know, and, and and at that time, I think they really did think that. They they did think that yeah. he was the bad guy. But to be honest, if my dad was here and he had told his story once again, it would have been a completely different story because he would have been telling the other side, you, you know. And, you know, they kind of touch on it a little bit, yeah. but they make it seem like Jerry was only about my dad, but that's not the truth. Yeah. What I like to tell people, you know, Jer- Easy E and Jerry Heller are equivalent to what Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine are today. Hmm. They, I just don't think that they understood that business aspect that back then and yeah, exactly. in those years. Yeah. It was just ahead of their time, and, and that and that's why my dad was a visionary. He was very ahead of his time. You know, he was a drop older than them, but he was 
so much more advanced. And, um, you know, I, you, 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 can, you can get mad at that at the time when I mean, they were young, you know, coming out of high school and all that stuff. And it, it, I don't think there's anything wrong. I, I'm not mad at them at all for feeling, or I don't think anybody should be mad at them for feeling like they were cheated or they were getting played or Jerry was uh, the bad guy or evil. Um, but I don't think that that was the case at all. So we, just to clarify, because there's people going around that think that uh, Jerry Heller had something to do with your father's death and like the dis- demise of Ruthless Records. No. You don't think so at all? N- n- no, and I don't. I don't think that at all. A- yeah. Absolutely not. I mean, Jer- Jerry loved my father as if he was his own father. And what can you tell us about like other business ventures that you're doing? I know that you you create hats and things of that nature, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, I just dropped my hat line, my EB hat. It, it's weird because you know I just been wearing hats for years um just naturally just like a hat to the point where i did if i didn't have a hat on i felt uncomfortable honestly so after a while i started putting easy on hats really just like some shameless self-promotion but i didn't have any intention of actually creating hats but what happened was me just literally just wearing them all the time you know a lot of 90 percent of my guy friends are professional athletes so like I would be out and people they would start snatching them off my head or start asking me like when am I getting my easy hat you know and yeah. I would start I would, I would be like wait you would wear this and they'd be like yeah and like just it kind of it really happened organically and then I was like you know what I'm just gonna maybe I should just make these so I did start off with like some basic snapbacks I mean I launched my website we want easy dot com but my second phase of hats were actually getting into like custom designs like more high end hats um, you know similar to like a Don C. Um, which I'm really excited for. I yeah. mean, it, it, it was a passion that, you know, I, I didn't have any intention on selling it or doing anything. It really was just for myself. It's something that I love. I love to wear hats, and um, it, it's actually kind of cool. You know, it's not the yeah. typical thing that most people do, and, and I, I think I got it honest from my dad just thinking it outside the box. Mm. So what's more important to you? I mean, we ask this question to, to a lot of our guests, but what's more important, passion or profit, and why? Passion or profit? I'm 100% passion. First of all, most people make a profit from their passion anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, I mean, that's something that that, that just comes. And I, don't, I don't think you should live with, uh, you know, your life just looking for the money. I, mean, I think you'll just be a miserable person doing something like that. But, I mean, I always really, I like, definitely, you got to do the things that you love, the things that you're feeling. I mean, those are the things that are going, it's going to happen better and faster because you really believe in something. You know, a lot of people, anybody can just go to a job and make some money here. Um, but really, really, really doing something that you love and been passionate about. It. I mean, that, that's the joy in life, to me, at least. So what's your motivational drive? I mean, I, I know you've probably hit a lot of roadblocks in your life. And as you said, just because you're Easy E's daughter doesn't mean that, you know, the world is going to be given to you. So how do you, how right. do you remain headstrong and, and how do you knock down the barriers that are, you know, in your way? You know what? I got to give that credit to my mother. I mean, I don't think that I've met a stronger woman. Um, and you know, and it's hard being a female in the business that we are in as well. Um, um, I, I really give her all the, all the credit for that. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, it's very, it is very difficult. Nothing is easy. And it's to me, it's just like when you're, when you're passionate about something, you love something, you just continue to do it. And a lot of, a lot of my fight, honestly, has been this documentary, really getting the truth out about my dad. And you know what, as much as I love music, as much as I love fa- fashion and I love sports, to me, everything that I do is really, you know, in hopes of having a bigger voice to mm. be able to use, you know, have a more a more of a um, influence. Yeah. Um, and then that's speak up on different things, not just my dad, but th- different things in this world. The same in the same way that he did. You know, I'm very big on that. So to me, my drive is always getting bigger to, to be to have much more of an impact on people.